Okay, you're all set. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, got it. Uh, it's February 15th. Uh, we are at our monthly um, work session. Uh, could I get a motion to open the meeting, please? So moved. Second. Second. We got Ben and Tanner. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Good evening, everyone. Um, again, it's our work session uh, for the month of February. Um, also, National Ski School Resource Officers Day. Uh, so thank you for all of our SROs and SPOs. Um, today is your day. Thank you for all you do in keeping us, our staff, students, uh, and the community safe. Uh, could I stand for, uh, stand for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the Republic which it stands, one nation under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we're back. So first up tonight, we have a presentation from on the Capital Project. So I see uh, Chris and Lou are coming in along with our Director of Facilities, Mike Shore. Looking forward to this. I'm sure everybody else is. Lots of exciting activities in the school. Uh, things are looking great. And we'll get a status update. like they're still connecting. So once they get on, we'll have a presentation and we'll be talking about the next phase and some of the challenges we have right now due to the current situations, uh, workforce and in uh, manufacturer delays. So it looks like they are connected now. So I will introduce Chris Glavitz from Tetra Tech and Lou Rodriguez from the Palumbo Group Mike Shore is also here, our director of facilities. And um, I guess I think Chris will start. So whenever you're ready, Chris. Sorry, clicking buttons. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thanks. Good evening. Melody, shall I share my screen and run the presentation or? Uh... Yes, that's fine, Chris. I gave you a co-hosting capability. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. I'm just trying to present this in a way that doesn't take up all of my screens. Sorry. <laughs> just, a, just a moment here, technical difficulties. Okay. okay. Hopefully you will see a the the first the slide that looks like the first slide in a presentation. Yes, Chris, we see it. Okay, so uh, thanks for having us here tonight, um, Lou and myself. We are looking to um, give you an update on where we stand with the capital project in its various phases. Uh, first, I'd like to talk for a moment about some of the things that we've gotten done in phase one. Um, the big uh, some, some of the work at the high school we will remember were science room upgrades, music room upgrades, all that stuff. So we, um, I do want to just highlight here that there is another piece to be done this coming summer, which the contractors are trying to start on early in the spring, in fact, which is the middle school entrance, that whole traffic reconfiguration and drop-off reconfiguration at the, at the front of the middle school as well as the synthetic turf field that's you know, in back of that middle school there. Um, also this coming summer, and this was always scheduled to be this way, the finishing of the 
the pump house and little pieces of work inside falls, the middle school and the high school to allow that central water system to supply those three buildings with, uh, with the water from, uh, from the high school well primarily. Okay, so as, as we see here, we've, uh, you know, the turf field is in, the fencing is up, um, and you've been, been using it, and hopefully it's been, it's been helping your athletes train and you know, have PE classes and all the things that it was designed to do. The music rooms are up and along. We're really excited to, to um, hear, you know, no pun intended here, what comes out of, out of these new spaces and, uh, and the usage of those. The STEM wing, I uh, was just in there earlier today talking with, with Tom Mellon, um, and he's learning how to use the spaces together, you know, and experimenting with the different you know, configurations of how to roll those tables around and use them together. And that was exactly the point that, that I had all this flexible um, furniture and be able to use the three spaces that are in that suite together or separately. In fact, when I was there, there was a, a I'm not sure what type of class it was or students and a teacher um, talking in the class. The, the rolling door was down. Tom and I were back in the back talking about stuff and um, shows that that flexibility of use that was uh, that was really came out of the meetings with the high school staff. Uh, some of the science room reconfigurations um, are complete as well. Uh, chemistry room up at the top here you see and um, on the left is the physics room. So that brings us to phase two, which is um, we'd like to talk about a little bit more. Um, and I'd like to preface this conversation and invite Lou into it uh, with you know, as you, as we've all heard in the news and we've all lived and anyone who's trying to run a school these days knows it more than anyone else, that there, there is a lot going on in terms of uh, supply chain and inflation and workforce issues um, in, in COVID that are making it, uh, that are presenting challenges for, for getting work done, whatever your work is. Um, we've, we've been able to, you know, and the Palumbo Group has been able to um, get phase one done, you know, pretty well. Some things stretched out a little longer than we liked, um, but, but we're able to push forward and push through some of those challenges that, that COVID has, has placed on capital project teams. Um, as we're looking forward to phase two, uh, we, we see another level of, of challenges um, coming at us, and there's some things that we can't control but what we want to talk about tonight is some of the ways we can react to that with, with strategies that we can control um, to move forward with work and have successful projects. Um, so with that all, Lou, I don't know if you want to, if you want to jump in with some of, some of those challenges we're seeing uh, based on, you know, just what the market is doing, what, what the bidding and contracting environment um, is doing, but I'm sorry, one last thing I want to say before we, we get into that is that the status of phase two is that we are, I think we're very, very close to obtaining SED approval for this bundle of projects. Um, I have been saying for some time that the state education department has uh, been, I think, struggling with a workforce issue of their own with regard to the number of project managers that they have to review these projects. So while we've had technical review, um, from the other departments um, of the Office of Facilities Planning, We're, we've been waiting for that project manager, project manager approval. Um, it, it, they seem to have hired someone else. We're getting emails from someone with a, with a name we don't recognize. So that's a good thing that they're, they're staffing up. Um, and just the other day, I think it was yesterday, uh, we received some, an email from them. So it's, it's some indication that uh, they're looking at this project. So we hope that we're gonna get SED approval very soon. Um, and then we can move into the, the bidding phase, which is what, um, what Lou's going to start to talk about now. Hey, guys, and uh, thanks, Chris. So, uh, you know, with the market today, what we've been trying to do is really come up with a plan that, that talks to um, smart bidding, uh, when you look at the early package in phase one, 
uh, we were able to really get ourselves ahead of the game. Uh, we're under budget by uh, a really great number. And, <clears throat> you know, moving into the next phase of work, how do we control the numbers? So uh, we initially, the last meeting, we had talked about pushing the middle school as a whole um, out to 2023 um, and you and doing all the elementary schools today. Uh, I think what we'd like to do is talk also about uh, uh, the middle school and Lakeview. Lakeview is very mechanically uh, weighted. Uh, there's a lot of mechanical work there. And what we've been seeing in the indus industry right now is anything mechanically weighted uh, where, you know, the numbers are just uh, out, you know, they're out there right now. Um, just to give you an idea, I would normally budget uh, a renovation on the mechanical side um, at $65 a foot. Right now it's coming in at $100 a foot. Um, so we're 30% off the mark. It's, it's, uh, the numbers are, are, are crazy. So when you look at what's left, if you look at Austin, Fulmer and Falls, the, the scope of work there is, is more controlled. It's more GC and less mechanically, uh, oriented, the mechanical work is really tying into existing, upgrading some components, but we have more control there. So our thought was, let's let's take that scope of work, let's put it out to bed, and uh, let's do that with the understanding that that work will carry through into the fall. There's no way we're going to have this work done by the end of August. So, you know, when you look at uh, uh, Fulmer, you know, for example, uh, you know, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an addition there that just, it doesn't, you know, yeah, thanks, Chris. So you look at Fulmer, we have the elevator addition in the back. That automatically, we already knew uh, that that was going to push. So what we want to be able to do is really, how do we strategize? How do we uh, let the contractors bid a, bid a contract that's going to be fair, right? There's no way they can be done with the work by the end of August. So that's really the you know discussion tonight. And for the board to really chew on and say, you know, we agree with this uh, approach or not. But the idea right now is across the three elementary schools is <clears throat> we can still get this work out to bid, even if we pushed and say we're, we're bidding this work and say, you know, uh, at the beginning of April, we can still get this work done by the end of the year. Um, and it's, it's primarily GC oriented. Um, and then if it pushes, it pushes a little bit, but, um, you know, we feel good about that. The, when you look at uh, the middle school and uh, uh, Lakeview, we're talking about potentially bidding the, that scope of work in the fall. And what we're hoping is uh, what we're seeing right now with the industry being so crazy, what we're hoping is everything comes down a little bit and we're all, you know, we get some good bidding for work in 2023 that's heavy mechanical work. Right now, everything's mechanically uh, oriented or heavy. The numbers are, are crazy. So that's so, sort of how we're looking at this thing. And that's, you know, that's a mindset. And, the, you know, again, this is big picture approach. Um, uh, we're open, you know, the board has, uh, you know, a lot of uh, expertise as well when it comes to this, you know, to, to the industry. But we're, uh, this is like our mindset right now. This is what we believe we should do. So in, in some range to add one or two points, th thanks Lou. The, um, you know, the schedule that's, that's up right now, that dashed yellow line is, you know, kind of where we are in time right now. 
Um, we're, we're kind of at that, that end of what we had planned for SED. We thought we would have that back and be getting that out to, for, for bid and award and doing that work. Um, and, and the sort of the yellow line that sort of gets dashed out at the end. That's what Lou is talking about is pushing into the fall, depending on when we can just, just physically get material. So I don't know if you want to share some of the, some of the lead times and the number of weeks for, for some of the big pieces of especially mechanical equipment, but also things like, like doors and glass and aluminum extrusions for, for framing, which we have all of those, those yeah, kind no. of components in our project. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, you're, and you're right. So uh, on purpose, we pushed the middle school, um, but you look at the chiller there, the chillers, chillers right now are 50 weeks. They're one year out. So we really have to make sure that we are planning so that one year out, <laughs> we have a chiller on site and it's not being pushed uh, too far and, you know, into the summer. Um, when you look at uh, something as simple as unit ventilators, unit ventilators are 16 weeks. Rooftop units right now are, you know, running 18 to 22 weeks. Um, uh, everything right now is, is, is out. The big thing we're also seeing is uh, controllers. Controllers that are associated with uh, mechanical units, uh, the chips, there's chips that are, that are part of these controllers that, um, the major manufacturers can't get. And there's, they're basically saying, okay, fine, you'll get the unit on site. But as far as controlling that unit, <laughs> there's, you know, today, as of today, you know, those controllers we're seeing issues going out into September and October. Um, so right now, I think, you know, what we're trying to do is control expectations to the best that we can. Um, but, uh, we're every single day, there's a new hurdle and this, you know, the controller, uh, uh, conversation just, just started and it's across all of the major, um, uh, you know, manufacturers when it comes, when it comes to controls. So it's one of the one of the specific strategies we've been talking about to deal with with mechanical equipment, especially is is the possibility of uh, utilizing a cooperative purchasing option, which a school district you know can take advantage of, and which we did on phase one um, to to procure some of the work there, uh, and and do an HVAC package. So that's you know and down on that bottom line where you see HVAC co-op bid. All right, so splitting some of that, some of that very, very long lead time, some of those pieces of equipment, um, and bidding those, you know, relatively soon within the next few months, so that uh, a year from this spring, you know, <laughs> we'll have we'll have the chiller, um, so that when we do the public bidding portions of the middle school and Lakeview, um, we've gotten ahead of that lead time, we've gotten that. Um, that very long procurement process sort of stacked up so that then when we're, when we bid those projects, uh, we know we have those critical pieces of equipment. So um, while yes, we think that pushing some of that work out um, to the summer of 2023 makes more sense. We're still trying to get some of that work going so that we can make that happen successfully. If, um, if there are questions about that, um, happy to happy to take them. We can um, also run through just the, the major pieces of work building by building just to remind folks about what the scope is. Just a quick question. None of this affects the current, you know, the, the pump house, the, no issues getting the materials for that. Still, that's still going. That'll be as scheduled, right? So that's, that's a great question, Adam. Thanks for asking that. No, we're, we're building the pump house. Um, everything's there. Uh, the the big part of the schedule is going to be we cannot we have to wait to demo the existing pump rooms right at each one of the buildings so we have uh, the high school fall you know falls and the middle school and that has to wait so there's going to be this uh, coordination that needs to happen right at the end of the year to you know uh, bring all the buildings online with the new water system 
make sure board of health approval is there and everything else. So we have to do this dance, but yeah, as far as building the building, that's going to be in place. It's going to be more of our coordination later to demoing your existing pump rooms, right? And It'll be functional though. It, there's yeah. not going to be delays in getting it functional with the material shortage or anything like that. It'll be good to go. No, no, I think we're, 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 to, we're in a really good place. And on purpose, we put the completion of that pump room uh, into uh, May of, uh, of, you know, of 2022. So we're in a good place. It's going to be just coordination. You know, it's, it's shutting down the existing water system, bringing the new one online. There's got, that's really important. How do we do that? And, you know, make sure everyone's really happy there. Yeah. Got it. And, and Chris, you're going to go over the middle school work, like the separate part, understandably the material delays, but the, the site improvement, um, the parking lot work, that's going to be also pushed off too, or is that going to go? So the, the parking lot work that's at the middle school was part of phase one and, and was scheduled to be this coming summer. So that remains on schedule as we've been planning it. So no material delays with that. It's just this pipe laying around out there and all that stuff's good to go. And they're, they're getting, out. yeah, they're getting stuff and they're trying to get, you know, whatever they can get, get it on site, make sure that we have it. Um, I haven't heard anything about asphalt um, and any issues there. But you know, you never know what what spring is going to no, take. But as far as as far as yeah, I know, and, and to that point, I, they're on board with the front, and they've also we've already started working on the back side of the middle school uh, and setting up you know infrastructure for stormwater systems. Um, you know, so we're ready for you know to 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 make sure that we get those fields done uh, this summer as well. Gotcha. Yeah, I see you see all the work going on. Just to make sure everything's in place and that's going to go as planned. So, yeah. yep. Thanks. We're on. We're on point. Yep. Yeah, and that was that was for work that was bid, you know, a year ago. So the contractors have had that time to place their orders and um, and, and get those pieces in. Lou, just piggybacking on what Adam said, that includes the turf field on the right side of the middle school too. We we're not going to have any delays with that, correct? We we're on point with uh, with a turf. Um, the carpet's going to be ready for install this summer. Yes. Yep. Perfect. I feel your pain on the mechanical side. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Yeah, it's it's been. I'll tell you, it's uh, it really has been tough. Uh, you know, this this past month, I can't believe the pricing. It's it's been crazy. So. Well, it's not even that. Like you said, deliveries. I have 60 units I'm waiting on, ceiling units. They're sending three a day. Every other day, I'll get three, yeah. I'll get four, you know, so. That's right. They're, yeah, they, they're they piecemealing. And what's tough, I mean, with with the school district, you can't do that. It's either we have it or we don't. Right. And then, you know, so we start talking about, you know, Lakeview and middle school. We can't get that equipment. It ain't going to be here. So it's a good, I think it's a good uh, strategy, push it, let's put it out to bid in, in, you know, in the fall. And when you look at the elementary schools, it's, it's, it's really a lot of G it's GC based, you know, it's, uh, it's building new walls, uh, it's demo and building new walls and recreating uh, and your security entrances. That's, that's our biggest unknown, right? you know, uh, uh, getting storefront in, but, but your entrances are pretty straightforward. So you know, I feel, I feel good about, you know, the thought process here, but we are still waiting for SED approval. <laughs> Got to say that we're still waiting for approval before we go out to bed. Anybody we have anything else before we continue on with the presentation? Just a general question in terms of these shortages. And is there an expectation of when this is going to stop six months, a year, two years, or it's TBD? Nobody knows. That's, if, uh, if, if I knew that, I would be in a different business. I think. <laughs> yeah. okay. If you had a all, we'd, we'd all be. Fair I, enough. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a it, 
it's a great question. I think that across the board, we're seeing, uh, uh, and I brought up the controller issue, right? So the manufacturer can make the controllers. They're waiting for a chip. That chip is not being manufactured, so they cannot produce. Um, we have uh, overhead door manufacturers that are saying that they can't give us overhead doors for four months because the spring, the spring that they use, the coil, the spring is being manufactured by somebody that is, is no longer making those springs. So it's all of this craziness that, that's happening right now that, uh, you know, it's the, the little pieces that are part of the big build that we can't get. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Wish I, wish I had an answer for you. <laughs> no, that's good. That's fine. Thank you. Let's continue on. All right. Thanks, Tom. So just run quickly through the, the different buildings, kind of remind folks of, of the scope of work in phase two. So um, we, had, and we had some good meetings earlier today um, with the building leadership, um, Sandra and Mike Shore, about, um, and, and a couple of folks from Palumbo Group, uh, just to kind of run through these at Austin Road, at Fulmer Road, and at Lakeview. Um, so at Austin Road, there's, there's some, of, some work that's kind of spread throughout the building. Um, the fire alarm and PA and clock system upgrades, it's kind of through the building. And that type of work can be done second shift. Um, so when, when Lou was talking about pushing into the school year, uh, that, that's some of that stuff, you know, they can come in second shift and, you know, do, do a couple classrooms and get out for the next day. So some of that work can, can be ongoing more easily. Um, we have the front entrance improvements, uh, the secure vestibule, and the and the creation of a of a new office for that uh, that individual that is the greeter as well as the SRO who would sit in that office. Because if if you remember that layout, if you've been over there recently, you'll remember that the main office is sort of you know down the hall into the corner a little bit, and there's no visual connection there. Um, so moving a couple staff out there, creating a new space. Uh, doing some work on the doors there um, to create that. The other main piece of work is it, the renovation of the library and its a um, couple of spaces that are that are associated with it. So new library shelving, new ceiling, new carpet, new finishes mostly, um, new circulation desk. So that sort of thing to reconfigure that library to to bring it up to date as far as what uh, what the building needs that space to be able to do. They, they plan to have uh, large like staff meetings in that space with movable furniture so they can get you know that 50, 60 people group um, in that space more easily than, than it is now. Um, and, and also for the learners that are in there um, that have a little more space for, for tables and desks to do the, the kinds of work that, that happen in a media center these days. Um, the two main spaces that are immediately off of that, the sort of the, um, I think it's a kindergarten, first grade kind of reading room down there. Um, we'll get some renovations to that. The maker space type room that is the other one is going to remain more, more as is. Um, the district hasn't, you know, fixed that room up relatively recently. So we're not doing a lot of work there. Okay, so that that's Austin Road, and and you know as we're thinking about the scheduling, you know we're thinking also about the placement of these spaces within the building, access. You know, in, in Austin Road, you have that back door that's that's up behind the the library. Um, you know, to to potentially, and again, this might be second shift, but allow contractors to come in and out relatively easily and not have you know not have to traverse through much of the building to be able to do their work. Uh, similarly, at, at this building, you have a good layout if that. Uh, you know, if there's a short period of time where that front entrance is is having some work done to it and is uh, out of commission, you do have side doors, you know, especially right on the front there that you could, you know, temporarily, you know, bring students in and out of. Uh, so there's some there's some good flexibility at Austin Road. So, Chris, that's a great point. I, and we're 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 taking this approach across all of the elementary schools is, you know, how do we, um, you know, get these 
a space is built, uh, seclude it, hard barrier it, and still keep means of egress. And, you know, contractors coming in second shift and doing that work, if we need to, um, we're going to have that planned. And it, it'll be in the bid docs to do that. Yep. At Fulmer Road, a similar story at the front entrance. Um, a little bit less work at the front entrance to make the secure vestibule, but the same kind of same kind of work there. Um, in this case, the library is kind of buried in the middle of the space, so that's that's you know going to be a little bit have a little bit of a longer path for contractors to get into there. But uh, the library work, hopefully, we can get you know a lot of it done over the summer. But we expect things to to weed into the fall. Uh, this is you know disconnect reconnect to the existing duct work, for example, there. So we're, we don't need, you know, a lot of new mechanical equipment in this case. Um, you've recently done some upgrades to that equipment. Uh, so we're gonna use that, that existing equipment that still has a lot of life in it. Um, there's that elevator that's on the sort of the top left side. Again, another piece of work that can be done, you know, in part just from the exterior of the building, right? So you have a good opportunity to get a contractor in there and be able to do some work. Um, you know, obviously there, there are noise issues that we're very well aware of and, and need to be managed, but if they can get um, a certain amount of work done over the summer, uh, it's concrete, it's concrete block, it's that sort of stuff, um, and just get that space ready for the elevator, um, that can, you know, that, that's relatively isolated from the, from the functioning of the school um, during a normal school day. So um, we know that that the elevators are one of those components, you know, they've got computer chips and stuff in them that that's going to be out a little ways to get that actual, the cab and the guts, the guts of the elevator. Um, any questions on Fulmer Road? Going on to the Falls building. Uh, similar at the front door, security entrance improvements, and we'll be creating another space for the greeter um, and, the, and the SRO to, to be at the front of the building right now, and it starts back at, you know, back near those um, the locker rooms kind of behind the gymnasium. So just getting, you know, spaces for, for personnel where they need to be. Um, there is a, a piece of a bathroom renovation up at the front of that. Um, the, those two bathrooms that are right next to the, uh, the, the space where we usually meet, right, that, that large room there, um, adding a third uh, single use gender neutral bathroom in that location just to add um, add that level of amenity. It will also be handicap accessible, which is one of the issues in this building for the old bathrooms uh, that don't meet that, that ADA requirement. So that, that single use bathroom really will in, increase the, um, the accessibility um, in this building. Uh, you'll see at the top of the plan, there's the boiler room up there. There's some, some piping reconfiguration that's happening back there. Again, a good example of some stuff that can happen uh, and, and not really affect much of the other um, parts of the building so long as it's not done during heating season. But that's that's piping, that's valves, um, some of that work that that can easily be done from the exterior uh, through that through that overhead door that's in the back there. Any questions about the falls? And so I'm sorry, you know, for these, you'll see that you see the list on the side, but uh, fire alarm, PA system, there's some electrical panel replacements. Those are happening throughout a lot of these buildings that you'll see. Okay, let's, this is where it gets a little more complicated, I put easy ones at the front. Right, so Lakeview, as Lou was saying there, um, we are adding pooling to some spaces here. Uh, so there are new rooftop units, new air handlers. Um, and so this is where we get into some heavier um, mechanical equipment needs, which is why we've been looking at this, uh, pushing that to the, sec to the summer of 2023. Um, uh, and, and as well, if there's actually, there's quite a bit of work at Lakeview. There are some areas of the building where we're kind of gutting and redoing it. Um, if we work sort of from the top left, there's that main entrance where we're, adding a, we're creating a secure vestibule in that hallway and enlarging that security office. Um, again, to have a greeter and a, and a spot for the SRO. Uh, there's the library space just to the right of that, which is um, again, gutting that out and redoing that library. Um, 
going down to the bottom of the plan at the sort of historic front of the building with the portico there. Um, to the right of that is the nurse suite, which is getting getting gutted and redone. To the left of that is what they call um, uh, related services. So OTPT uh, counselors in those office spaces there. Um, and if you've, you've been in there, that's a totally different configuration of that space as well. So, um, so that's getting a, a gut and redo. And then going up to the far right, there you see a block of work up there that is currently the, the girls' locker room. Um, it's been gutted out by the district over time. It, it was a space that just wasn't being utilized and there have been some, some different discussions about how to use that space differently. So through the, through the process, um, working with, with Jen Pontillo and Lee Gallion, um, identifying some, uh, there's a conference room back there, as well as three spaces that will serve as offices and also small group instruction spaces. So uh, those kids with IEPs that need a group of four or five, that's what these spaces are designed for. So they'll have some furniture in there, a screen on the wall, teacher's desk, uh, relatively small spaces as far as classrooms go, but meant for, for very small groups. Uh, so that's a, a space that they're, that's kind of a, a new um, a new space that they've never had before, a new um, type of space that they've never had before. So you know, they're excited the, to get those online. The access for that's going to be towards the exit door past the stairs, or is it going to be? That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, um, when you go down that little hallway toward those exterior doors, um, yeah, just right before you get there, we're, we're sneaking a, a door in there. There will be some storage space that remains. So on the bottom, that kind of L-shaped space will be storage for the gymnasium stuff, gymnasium equipment. There's some uh, gymnastics equipment that they have there. Um, but yeah, getting into a central hallway that will uh, lead you down to that other um, sort of back door that's right next to the um, basically the exit of the gymnasium in that corner. Um, and there are some, some older bathrooms back in that area that will be renovated into, you know, ADA, you know, accessible bathrooms, which the existing ones uh, were not. Um, I, I highlighted the, the lower wall, the exterior wall um, of the cafeteria, just to indicate that that's getting new unit ventilators that will include cooling um, in those spaces uh, as well. Um, any other questions about Lakeview? When you're doing the front, the, the related services suite and the nurse's office, is that all internal behind the woodwork or is that whole, all the woodwork and everything getting taken out? Well, the, the exterior of the building will remain. So no, not the exterior of the building, there, but inside the hallways, in the, the grand entrance where all the woodwork is out in the hallways. That will remain as well. Yes. So it's all inside the, the confines of those walls. Right. Okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We really wanted to, and, and went through a little bit of gyrations to, to stay away from those, those quarter walls and all that nice historic stuff there. Um, and, and, you know, the, the exit and not, not get into demolition of that stuff. Cause you just can't patch it in a way that, that can match, you know, that those old materials. Um, right. So we're doing things like just taking a door off its hinges. Um, it's wide enough from an, from an accessibility standpoint to be able to roll through that in a wheelchair, but it's not wide enough as a compliant door itself because it's not a full three foot O door. So taking the door off its hinges, you can get in and then we're creating a new door, a new compliant door with a sort of vestibule that's open to the hallway kind of behind that to preserve that historic, um, the historic nature of, of the building, but also, um, uh, you know, ha have what we think will be a good installation and, and probably save some money as well, because it's very, very hard to replicate that, uh, the brickwork and the terrazzo and the rounded corners and all the, the great details that are in that building. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we'll go to the middle school now. So the middle school, similarly, um, there is that chiller up on the top of the of the STEM room. So the on the, the main plan, that, um, that highlighted room that is uh, down from the library. Um, that room is going to get, you know, sort of gut, gutted and renovated to become a STEM room. And sitting on top of that room is the chiller. Uh, so that's the one that, that uh, 
once we <laughs> once we do all the stuff we need to allow a contractor to order it and be sure that it's the right thing, then we start, you know, we start our 50 week time period uh, for getting that chiller. Um, similarly, there are mechanical improvements, um, you know, in other areas of the building to the, the library uh, media center, which we see at the, the bottom right hand part of the plan, which is getting gutted and redone as well to include a maker space, um, a sort of a separate classroom area, because really, you know, librarians um, really, really are teachers, you know, they're, they're teaching lessons and they're also having teachers come in and use their space to teach lessons. So there's a, a breakout space for that, as well as some of the small group workspaces, uh, you know, somewhat similar to a couple of the spaces in the, the high school media center um, that, we've, that we've seen on some walkthroughs. Um, the planetarium, when we go up to sort of the top of the sheet, that will be renovated into a large group instruction space. So there will be some tiered seating added in there and, you know, more of a lecture style hall um, to be able to repurpose that space. Um, and then below that in the kitchen, the serving area, um, is going to be you know renovated as well. We we did try to leave the hood in the same location and the electrical room in the same location, but did try to um, adjust the the flow of kids through those spaces because it it really gets kids from both sides. Right, you have the the, the two cafeterias there that get in um, one from each side. So trying to increase the the flow, um, push it a little bit toward the the direction that the high school serving area has gone where kids can come in. It's not just like one line all the way through. You have some choice as far as what sort of station, food station you wanna go um, and get your food um, and then funnel back out to the cafeterias. Um, the, the roof plan that's kind of in the middle there just highlights the chiller and a number of rooftop units just to kind of make the point that there, there is some, uh, some significant mechanical equipment, um, especially at the middle school here. Um, again, we have fire alarm, PA system, uh, clocks, some electrical panel replacements as well at the middle school. And then I'll just make a, if there are any questions about phase two, it's very, very high level. If you have, you know, more specific questions, obviously we, um, Mike, Mike Shore has documents as well, and we'll be um, working with the Palumbo group to package this and kind of chop it up into the different big packages that, that we've talked about a little bit earlier. Um, okay, so, so what we're calling phase three is the replacement of the stadium turf, right? We heard you know, recently that, well, a couple months ago now, that, that that turf is really starting to show its age, right? You've been using it quite a bit. It just, you know, it's, it's starting to tear the carpet itself. And um, so that's, um, slated for a, a, what we call re carpet um, so that the we understand that the drainage underneath is in good shape. Um, so we plan to remove that, the carpet essentially, um, and replace that with a new, you know, with new synthetic turf. That is um, about to go to the state for their review. Um, and hopefully we will get a good review time. The, the technical reviews, have, as I said before, the technical reviews have been happening on a, on a good schedule. And if they've got another project manager online, um, there were two for the entire state of New York. And now if there's three, that's a 50% improvement. So hopefully we'll see a, a, you know, a commensurate improvement in the review times of project managers. But um, so, so that's, that's a piece of, of the work, the, the big piece of work in phase three. We also had to do a little bit of work um, actually on the building to generate the aid. Um, and that was identified in, in conversation with, with building staff and John Russell in particular, um, that, that the, the, in his perception, sort of the oldest leakiest windows were at the band room and coral room. So we identified those for replacement. Um, it, it satisfies the threshold of work that you need to do in the building uh, for the state education department. Uh, so we'll just be replacing those windows with new modern windows. So that's that little picture on the top right. So that's the whole, the whole pod over there. We'll be getting them. Just that, just that one level really. Um, but there are, I believe nine windows in that strip between the coral room and the, and the band room. Gotcha. Um, obviously there, there are more windows throughout the building that are, you know, 
um, of a, of a kind of a similar vintage, but, um, just in experience by experience and, and John knowing the building so well, um, those kind of immediately popped into mind. It's like, I'd love to get those, those replaced on that, um, on that first floor, especially. So that's, that's what I have. If you have any other questions. Anyone? All right. Chris, you, then, you have hey guys, I'm, I'm back in on purpose. I, uh, I stopped my video because it, Chris, <clears throat> I don't know if it was bandwidth, but it seemed like it was breaking up a little bit. So I just wanted to not have an issue there. So. Got it. Well, if no one has questions, I want to thank Chris and Lynn very much for being here. And um, I'm sure there'll be more to come. Hopefully we'll hear from SED soon and we can start to move forward and, and, and have more as concrete of plans as we can, you know, we can with, with the unknown. And, and Chris and Lou, just a, a quick shout out. I got a lot of great emails after my spotlight last week on walking through the building. And, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of parents complimentary. You know, it's taken a while, but they definitely see the, the before and after. So, you know, thank you for all your patience. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Garlow, I got to say thank you for your leadership throughout this whole thing, too. You, um, you've been on point and you've uh, kept us kept us all in check and uh, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll second that. And thank you for the opportunity. We were really proud of some of the spaces that, that we were able to, to do and hope that uh, it helps the teaching and learning in Mayo Pack. Absolutely. Th thanks guys for, for um, your presentation and all the work you've done so far. It, it looks fantastic. Excited to, for the next chapter and hopefully uh it goes uh, as smooth as the first once once we get there. So, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, All right, it came out nice, guys. Thank, thank you me. both. Thank you both. Thank you, Carlos. All right, guys. Take thanks. care. Thank you. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay. So we, uh, we are moving on to agenda review. Melody, we can bring it up. Thank you. Bring it up there. Sorry about that. No worries. All right. So of course we start, you know, we open a meeting uh, with the pledge, um, our comments on agenda items. We'll go to our treasurer's report. Yeah. Uh, superintendent's report, our committee reports. I'll be going over a donation from the yearbook club on our consent agenda, which is uh, jam packed with um, some good stuff, our education reports, some contracts, intermunicipal agreements for services. And I missed the page, sorry about that. That is a consent agenda for that. We have the budget calendar uh, we're going to um, hopefully approve. Well, we did that already. The revised budget calendar, I'm sorry. The school calendar for next year, uh, we're gonna, uh, <laughs> we're gonna uh, vote on. And then we have our resident comments. And just, just to jump in, I know to be discussed more, but we're also looking to present some ad hoc advocacy materials just to flag that for you, Superintendent DiCarlo. I don't know if it's going to be during presentations or committee reports, but we're looking to show people how to interact with the stuff we have. Yes, that's correct. 
Okay, awesome. And then after Resident Thomas, we will close the meeting. And that does it for our, our uh, agenda review for Thursday, which will be 7.30, correct? At the yes. at the at the middle school. Yes. So that's that. And then we have to go. I think that's all we have for this portion. Uh, we'll be going into executive session now um, to discuss personnel um, issues. So with that, we'll say good night. Uh, we will see you Thursday. Um, can I get a motion to go into executive, please? So no. That was Trustee McDonough on so, a second. We had Trustee Mustafa as a second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.